Appreciate it. Um, we want this time to be valuable to you, not just a time where you have to sit and listen to you talk. So in a few minutes, we'll get up and move, uh, move around. You guys get to mingle a little bit, and we'll do a fun activity that I know you all will benefit from. Um, if anybody wants pizza at any time, get up and get it. If you want more drinks, you know where they are. Um, if you have a question, let us know. Um, but I want to introduce our management team real quick. Uh, my name is Amy. I'm the family placement manager. Um, there are a few of, your, few of your faces that I haven't gotten to meet in person. So if you want to come and introduce yourself afterwards, I'd love to meet you. Um, I know I'm in and out and around um, all the time, so I haven't got to meet everybody. Um, this is Brittany. She is our on-call coordinator. She's awesome. She's been doing a really, really great job. I know most of you have probably gotten um, to text with her quite a bit over the past few weeks. And um, we hope that that has been a smooth and efficient process for you. Um, on the nanny survey that you got, um, you know, definitely let us know what you think um, about anything, not about Brittany, but <laughs> about anything, uh, you know, any, anything from your families to how our on-call process works, um, how you think CNET works, things like that. And Brittany and I will be getting together next week to review everybody's answers and see how we can make our team better as a whole. So, um, and over here we have Abby, Abby Wade. Hi. Um, Abby is our <laughs> office support coordinator. She um, helps with uh, some on-call coverage at the end of, in, of each week. So you've probably gotten texts and calls from her as well. Um, she helps with some of the behind the scenes stuff to make sure that our team keeps going, everybody's mm -hmm. posting availability, um, just a lot of really important housekeeping items and we could not live without her as well. So, that's our team. Um, Abby usually works at Westlake, Brittany usually works at Far West, and I work everywhere. So um, that's where you can find us. If you ever have a question, concern, anything about your family and on-call position, um, even a placement question, come up to Far West anytime. Brittany has an open door. Um, come in, chit chat with her. She has an awesome nanny experience. She's also been in your shoes um, full time as well on-call nanny, so she knows exactly um, what it is to be from your side you know, and the, the things that you typically face. She even has some inside scoops on a lot of our families. <laughs> she knows, you know, some of the, some of the more tricky ones, mm -hmm. I would say, and some of her favorites. So, um, you know, if you have information about that as well, I know she'd love to talk to you anytime. So, without further ado, um, did everybody sign in? All right, because that's, that's how you're gonna get paid and get credit for being here, so make sure you did that. Um, everybody has a training packet and a pen, right? Does anybody need a pen or anything? Okay, <coughs> great. Over here on your, well, depending on which way you're facing, over here, we have in this back corner, we have some nanny t-shirts. I'm gonna tell you all about how we're gonna use those for our on-call team here in a minute. So, a lot of you are gonna be picking those up. Um, over here, we have, I think under the desk are some nanny go bags. Those are gonna be for our on-call nannies. I'll tell you a little bit more about that here soon. And then up on the top of the table, we have lots of promotional goodies. Um, if you're a placement nanny, meaning you don't work on call, I really like you to focus on that table. Get some pens, there's some night lights, some pizza cutters, all sorts of goodies that you can spoil your families with. Um, of course, they have college nannies and tutors all over on purple and green. Um, but that's a great way to, again, brand your identity and just give them something. You know, pretty much every family probably likes pizza at some point or another, so those pizza cutters are great. Um, if your families have little kids, night lights are awesome. So just fill up, grab whatever you want, give them to your families. It'll, it'll impress them for sure. The chapstick's really good. Yeah, the chapstick is good. It, it might be coconut. Or yeah. Something. Um, so the, the theme of our training here is you're not a babysitter. Sorry that that's off. I don't know how to work with projectors. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, we'll deal with it. Let me turn off this. Do you want to? Oh, am I being? Uh, yes. Okay. Where are the packets? Come on in. <coughs> for the, where are the packets for the? In the front. They're in the front. Okay. Training packets. All right. So you're not a babysitter. Um, you're a nanny. You're a professional, mature role model individual, and we want you to know that our expectations for you and the family's expectations for you and your own expectations should exceed that of your typical neighborhood babysitter. Um, so you can think back probably when you were in high school or maybe early college when you would have the Smith family call and say, hey, can you babysit on Friday night? You totally had the option of saying, no, I have plans with my boyfriend or girlfriend or, you know, no, I just don't go. 
And that's fine, that's great. That's a great part of being a babysitter. But now you're a professional nanny. You're part of a really great team, as you can see if you look at those around you. Um, we hired you because we believe that you're mature, you're educated, you're a role model, and that you can handle all of the job duties of being a professional nanny. Um, another big perk that you get is that you're a part of a team, you're a part of an agency that supports you in everything you do. Meaning that we have open world policy if you ever want to chit chat about anything. Uh, we handle all the taxes, liability, things like that to give you extra support and security legally. Uh, beyond that, you get to be a part of a brand. Um, not just a brand in Austin, but a national franchise brand. We have over 100 locations throughout the nation. Uh, we have three in Austin, and you're a big part of that. We are one of the biggest preferred providers in Austin, and you're a part of that. Um, there are some other nanny agencies, and we've always heard nice stories about things that have happened with those agencies. We want you to stay with us because we're good. We're very well known. Uh, we have lots of families who refer their friends to us, and we want to keep that, uh, that vision for our team. So you get to be a part of it. You're not a babysitter, you're a professional nanny, and we're excited to see all of the really neat things that we're gonna do this year. Um, with that in mind. Yeah. Oops. Like I said. So just kind of recapping some things here. Um, a CMT nanny, and if you want to fill in your blanks here, a college nannies and tutors nanny is a professional nanny. This is what you do. You're not just a babysitter. This is your, your position. For some of you, it's the start of a career. Um, for a lot of you, it's a great resume builder and a, a career starter if you're going into the field of teaching or psychology. Um, this is definitely something that you want to keep on your resume. Um, you are a role model for our younger counterparts. Um, you are an overachiever, meaning that you don't come in and you don't do the minimum. Um, you know, if the kitchen's a mess, be an overachiever, clean it up, even if it's not your mess. Um, you're an educator, an organizer, and you're extremely important. Um, our team is established, you can't see it there, but that's okay. Um, our team is established. Actually, I, I don't even know what that next link is. There we go, you're branded. <laughs> um, our team is branded. We're actually going to be implementing new nanny uniforms, and that is one way that you're going to be branded. Please do not feel like cattle when I say that. That is not what we mean. We're not branded <laughs> that way. Um, we don't own you. Um, what that means is you get to be a part of our brand. Um, you have something that you can wear and something you can be associated <coughs> with. So as a team, as we all make each other look good, that benefits not only you, but our, our company as a whole. Uh, once again, our team is professional and our team is well known. Um, you know, especially around Austin, um, we're, the families who don't know about us yet are learning about us quickly. And we want them to be learning about us quickly because they hear good things, not horror stories. So um, keep that in mind whenever you put on that t-shirt, whenever you go to ARBC, or whenever you show up to pick up your child from, from school on a Wednesday afternoon, people notice you. They see your actions and, you know, we want that to be a really great example because we want them to, um, you know, obviously help us grow and make us more. All right, so let's move on uh, real quick. So I, I mentioned on-call nanny uniforms. So raise your hand if you're an on-call nanny. Awesome. And there's actually quite a bit more of you as well. We have probably about 45 on-call nannies active on our team. And uh, we are going to be implementing on-call nanny uniform. Uh, we don't want it to sound boring, it's supposed to be exciting. This is a big thing, they're now mandatory. In the past, we did on-call nanny t-shirts, um, and they were kind of, you know, if you wanted to wear them to ARBC, yeah, that'd be great. Now they're mandatory. Starting May 1st, which is next week, I believe Wednesday, um, if you go to an on-call nanny job, you must be wearing an on-call nanny t-shirt. It is now uniform, and it is 100% required 100% of the time. If you are only a placement nanny, I'm not gonna make you wear a purple t-shirt every day with your family. The whole point of this is brand recognition and being part of a team. Um, like, if you go to Best Buy, what do you think of? The bright blue t-shirt, the yellow logo, the Geek Squad. Um, you can kind of picture their polos in your mind. That's what we want families to think when they think of college families and tutors, especially our Bright Horizons families. Um, 
They want to know that when a college nanny shows up to their doorstep to take care of their two-year-old that day, they have a vision of what that looks like. A mature, professional, young man or young woman showing up in their purple t-shirt ready to get to work. We chose t-shirts because we think they're more comfortable than polo, polo shirts, especially during the summer. Um, as far as what to wear on the bottom, you can wear jeans, you can wear shorts, as long as their fingertip length are longer. Um, in the summer when it's super hot, feel free to wear athletic shorts, fine by me. You guys are going to go to the park or ride bikes, wear whatever's comfortable. Um, just make sure that it is still conservative and covers all the necessary parts, all right? Um, T-shirts, let's see. As far as how to wear it, um, I kind of went over that. Um, while it is a T-shirt, um, we don't want to present a pajama-like appearance. So please still make sure that you are clean, that you smell good. Um, if you have any jewelry on, make sure it's child appropriate. If you're watching an infant yet that day, um, maybe no breakable necklaces, things like that. Um, have your hair done nicely. Even if it's pulled up in a ponytail or whatever, just make sure you don't look like you just rolled out of bed and you had a really fun night the night before. Does that make sense? We're all there. All right. Um, so, part time nannies at the end of training today need to pick up one t shirt. Part or full time on call nannies can pick up two. If we don't have as many as you need in the size you need, we're going to be writing down <coughs> the sizes and we'll make another order and get them to you as soon as possible. Okay? Any questions about the uniform? If you work as a placement nanny and an on call nanny, you still need to pick up a t shirt because you are an on call nanny as well. If you work full time and you feel like you're constantly doing laundry and want more than two two t-shirts, <coughs> come talk to Brittany or I and we'll accommodate you, okay? All right, let's go over new policies real quick and then we're gonna get moving and do some fun stuff. Um, so I know we put out a reminder several times, but for on-call nannies, whenever you post your availability online by Friday at noon, Make sure you post two weeks out instead of one. Okay, two weeks, two weeks, two weeks. Um, remember that if there is ever a week that you cannot post availability, maybe it's finals week coming up, which I hope none of you know. I hope you guys don't totally opt out. Um, if this summer, if you're going to Disneyland and need a, a week off, uh, whatever the situation is, if you need a week off from on call, remember to submit your time off request form at least two weeks in advance. So that we can approve it. It is first come, first serve basis. Um, make sure you are providing a legitimate excuse. You know, just take into consideration that we can't have all 40 nannies opt out of uh, being on call uh, finals week. So plan ahead. Even if you can only offer one day during finals week, do it. We need you. Okay. Um, log your hours within 24 hours of each job. Uh, please don't wait till timesheet day, whether you're on call or placement. I really don't have time, nor does Brittany, to give you guys a call and say, hey, what were your hours for the last two weeks? It takes us twice as long to log your hours as it takes you. So set a reminder on your cell phone, put a, you know, get your lipstick right on the mirror, but, you know, get a sticky note, put it on your forehead, do whatever you need to do to make sure you log your hours within 24 hours of each job. If your placement is not showing up on your timesheet, drop down list, you know what to do. Shoot us an email, super easy. Um, real quick about posting availability. Um, it's come to our attention because we've been so busy lately that um, if you are assigned on a job for a day, maybe from nine to one, if you still have availability posted from one to 10 p.m., technically you're still telling us that you are open to picking up a second job that afternoon and that you're available. If you don't wanna do more than one job a day, um, after we put you on the 9 to 1 job, go in and take off your availability from 1 to 10. Does that make sense? Okay, so kind of goes back to making sure availability, making sure your availability is up to date at all times. So just repeating that. If we assign you on a job in the morning and it still says you're available in the afternoon and you don't want to be, take it off. Okay. Can I reiterate something? Yes. <clears throat> also, don't forget to make sure you text me and let me know if you're scheduled for 35 or more hours. Some of you have been telling me you're you know, 30 and that's totally fine, just so I can keep that in mind. If you do that, if you're getting close to 40, can you go ahead and take some of your availability off the scheduler? Because I will just go ahead and try to keep staffing you jobs because I think that you're, availability on the, or you're available on the schedule. So if you get either, if either you're overwhelmed and you don't want any more hours for the rest of the week, or um, you know, if you're 37, 38 hours and there's no way you can be put on another job, if you'll just make yourself unavailable, um, and that way I know, you know, I don't try to accidentally forget and go to you for a job. 
And real quick, one recent change over the past two weeks um, for our on-call nannies, once again, sorry, placement girl, which I know that a lot of this is uh, focused towards on-call, but it's a real big part of what we do. So real quick, book of variance forms, that is formal, formerly known, well, whatever. they used to be called timesheet support forms. They're now called book of variance forms. All this is, if you are scheduled on any Bright Horizons job, and you are, are with the family for any amount of time outside of what the authorization report states, you need to have a book of variance form signed by the family. This is super duper important. Bright Horizons got really strict on um, their time frames that they're paying us for. So technically, if you're there from 8 to 5.30 and the authorization report only says 8 to 5, BUCA is only going to pay us from 8 to 5 unless you have a BUCA variance form signed by the parents saying that you were there till 5.30. Has nothing to do with the lack of trust in you. I know you guys all would never, you know, expand your time. But BUCA needs to know. They just want to have it on file. They're super official with everything and that's what that's for. We recommend that you always have five forms on you. Keep them in your car, keep them in an envelope, keep one folded up in your purse, I don't care. Just have them on you. And we actually have some printed out if you need to get some before you leave, let us know. Uh, one real quick thing, you guys all know this, let me remind you. Um, we have a no cell phone use policy when you are on a job watching children. Um, the only exception to this rule is if Brittany or I or Abby or the parent are trying to reach you to tell you something in regards to those children. That means if Brittany and I are texting you, um, wondering if you can take a job tomorrow, if you're on a nanny job, we're gonna forgive you if you don't text us back immediately. So we, we know and we want the children to be your first priority. Um, if it is nap time, you know, Johnny's asleep, he's napping, he's safe, everything's completely under control. If you have time, text us back real quick. Um, if it is about the family you're watching, obviously we want to hear from you to make sure you got the message. Maybe mom's running late. Um, maybe the mom called us and said, oh, I forgot Johnny needed to be at soccer at 530. You know, obviously we want you to get those messages. Everything else is off limits. No texting friends, no texting significant others, no texting mom, no Facebook, no Twitter, anything like that. Um, also in regards to family's computer, do not get on their computer and use the internet. Um, even if they tell you, you can. Sometimes families will say things are okay when they're really not just because they don't want to be rude. Um, know that that's our rule. Don't get on their computer at all unless you're doing something like helping the child with their homework or maybe looking online to see what Papa John's number is so you can order food for the kids, okay? That makes sense? Use your judgment. So, any questions? All right. Any, so okay. if I'm blowing up your phone and you're on a and you're on a job, it's not because I'm I'm mad at you that you're not answering your phone. It's because I might be trying to schedule ten jobs, all that which have deadlines. So if you're on a job, you know, and I, I usually try not to text more than a couple of times. Just after you get done with the job, just be like, oh, sorry, I was watching this family. I'm, you know, you're not going to get in trouble, of course, just like Amy said. So um, I don't want, you know, for for Amy to say that and then for you guys to be on the job and have me make you feel like you have to step away from the kids to, to accept the job. Um, if, if it's nap time or something like that, that's different. But um, usually if you just, as soon as you're done with the job, just say, sorry, I was working with this family and it'll be fine. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, all spells, use your judgment. If yeah. this was your sweet baby and somebody else's care, what would you want them to do? And, and so. All right, well now we're gonna do a fun activity. Um, we have core values. I'm not sure you guys know that, but we do. <laughs> and um, they are can-do attitudes, growth and results driven, and leaving it better. We are going to split up into three groups. So in a minute, we're going to number off one, two, three. Uh, we have group one over here, group two over here, group three over here <coughs> at the whiteboard. And each group is going to go over one of these core values. Group one is going to go over can-do attitudes. Having a can-do attitude means probably pretty self-explanatory. You know, walking into a situation with a positive, um, taking initiative type of attitude. So what I want you to do in each group is talk as a group and come up with the top five ways that you can achieve that core value. Um, Abby, Brittany, and I will be at each group kind of helping coach along. Uh, we'll probably spend about 10 minutes or so doing that exercise and then we're gonna come back together as a group Go over those, answer questions, wrap up, and then you guys can head out. So, but this is really important. I want you to really uh, be interactive in your group. 
talk, come up with the best five ways, and we will reconvene. Um, real quick, to just kind of go over what they are, what they are into, it's pretty self-explanatory. Growth and results driven. Um, as a team, you know, you're out in the field, you're working, you're probably not uh, really concerned with how much we're growing as a team or, you know, how much we grossed last year. Um, a lot. We're, we're doing quite a lot. So it's something to be proud of. And there are ways that you can work individually and as a team to be growth and results driven. So I'll be with the team number two to kind of help coach that along. And finally, leaving it better, um, five ways that you can leave the situation better than when you found it. When you show up to home, if it's a complete mess, what's the way you can leave that better? You show up to home and it's a rainy day and John and Sally are just really bummed out and don't want to do anything, what's the way that you can leave that situation better? So we'll be with you and um, help kind of coach things along. Let's go ahead and